Hello friends. My name is Ajitesh and I am the owner of website vitalflux.com which consists of lot of articles on data science and machine learning. In this video I am going to talk to you about what is model parallelism, what is data parallelism and what is tensor parallelism. I'm also going to briefly talk about what are the difference between them as I go along. As I mentioned, we'll go and look into the model parallelism, data parallelism, and the tensor parallelism. Before we go ahead, let's understand what is the need for us to have these kind of mechanism for training the deep neural networks. Basically, when we are talking about the deep neural networks having a large volume of data or for which the model size is large enough, then we have a constraint regarding the limited GPU memory. So in order to uh, overcome this constraint, we need different kind of mechanism where we need to split the data or we need to somehow split the model onto the different GPU memories and then go ahead and train the model, train the deep learning model. This is where you know we, we have this concept of model parallelism, data parallelism and the tensor parallelism. In model parallelism, we have one deep learning model, which is nothing but a deep neural network, which consists of a lot many number of layers. So what we do is we go ahead and split the layers onto the different GPUs. And then we go and first train the model with by passing the data to a set of layers on one GPU and the output of it is then passed to the second GPU having a different number of layers. Now the, the downside of this is that the second GPU has to wait uh, for the data processing to finish on the first GPU. The second mechanism is the data parallelism. When we have a large volume of data, we need to split the data into multiple different batches. We call it mini batches. And then um, what we do is each copy of model has to fit onto the each of the GPUs. So we then send these different mini batches onto the different GPUs, train the models in parallel and then um, this the output of it is then passed um, and is then exchanged uh, thereby averaging the gradients for the weight update afterwards this is what is being shown on uh, this this image where you have gp1 and gpu2 we have each of the model uh, which has to fit on each of the GPUs. The same model, same copy has to fit on each of the GPUs. In the mini batches, so this is a different set of data and this is a different set of data. They are passed to the different GPUs and the model is trained in parallel. Let's go and look at what is the tensor parallelism. Actually, the tensor parallelism uh, can be can said to be the more efficient form of model parallelism. Now what happens is here, instead of we splitting the layers across different GPUs, we split the matrices which consist of inputs and weights across different GPUs. And then the uh, data processing happens in parallel. Um, and this is required, I mean, as we, in the case of model parallelism, when a model uh, is too large to fit into GPU, this is another way of going and handling the scenarios of training the model in, par in parallel by splitting, by actually splitting the matrices across different GPUs. This is what is shown in the in the image where we have the we have the matrices 
split across the across the different GPUs. And when I say matrices, matrices consist of a part of data. The same is shown in the following slide, where you are saying that this. So this is basically the the basically the matrix. Now, um, when we do the matrix multiplication on a single GPU for training the model, this is how it looks like. But when we split the matrix, we see that you know um, each of the column uh, of the matrix is split uh, and moved on to the different GPUs, and finally the output is made as one one matrix. This splitting can happen either in column of a different of another matrix or by row of the matrix. So this is what is called as a tensor parallelism. Now let's look at what is the difference. Basically, the difference is when we are talking about the size of the models being too large, we would want to experiment or with either model parallelism or tensor parallelism but when we see that the data size is very large we go for what we have seen as theta parallelism the only downside is that the entire model copy has to fit on each gpu when we are going for the data parallelism so that's what i had to speak in this video if you want to learn more about it, you can go and have a copy of this book, Machine Learning Q&A by Sebastian Rashika. So that's all for now. Um, have a nice day. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.